This is how you can create an Apple Star UI edit in DaVinci Resolve. You seem like the type to love and believe em, and disappear right after the song. So give me the night to show you and hold you. Don't leave me out here dancing alone. All right, this edit style is a bit more advanced, but if you follow along step by step, you will definitely be able to do it too. The first thing we are going to do is grab a fusion composition and we will need one for every scene. In my case, I'm going to use five fusion compositions. In the first scene, we want to create a Spotify themed UI animation. To get the best quality possible, we are not going to use screenshots. Instead, we will use UI kits with high resolution PNGs. You can find UI kits on Figma, but to make things easier, I created custom UI kits optimized specially for editing, which you can download for free on my Discord. Just click the Google Drive link and download them there. Now right click the composition and open it in the Fusion page. In our node tree, we will have a 2D animation part and a 3D animation part. First, grab a background node. Our entire scene will live on this background. Right now it's way too small. So go to image, uncheck auto resolution and increase the width and the height. The bigger it is, the better the quality and the more you can zoom in later. But keep in mind, it will also get laggier. In my case, I'll just increase the height and keep the given width because we will mainly be scrolling down. Depending on your animation, you will need to adjust that. Also, set the alpha to zero so the background is transparent. Next, grab a merge node and connect the Spotify play button from our UI kit. It's way too big, so we will add a transform node to scale it down. You can fill the screen however you like with these static UI elements. I also add the album cover, which I masked out, and also add a simple purple background with a rectangle mask and rounded corners to match the Spotify style. Finally, I add a simple static text that says lyrics. For the font, I will use Apple's free San Francisco font throughout. Now we have our static elements, but we also want something dynamic. In this case, I want the lyrics to appear with a nice animation. For that, you either need text animation presets or you can build your own. I will use my 30 text animation pack which you can find under the link in the description. To drag them into Fusion, click on Templates and wait a moment. Here you will see all the presets. Scroll down until you find the text animation presets. For the first animation, I will use Swipe Up Words 60 FPS because my timeline is 60 FPS. Type in your lyrics and adjust the size, font and position. The text will now fade in until the end of the composition. If you want it to fade in faster, increase the animation end slider. And you can even type in a higher number if 100 frames isn't enough. Another tip, Fusion doesn't have audio. So on the edit page, you can set marker point for each word and then see those markers inside the spline editor in Fusion. Alternatively, you can search for the media in node with control plus space and you will be able to hear the music. But from my experience, is usually a bit laggy. Now let's add the next two text animations. This time I will use the wave in text. The problem is the animation starts automatically at frame zero. To delay it, insert a time speed node and set the delay to the frame where you want it to begin. That's how it should look. The 2D part is done. So let's turn this into a 3D screen. Grab an image plane 3D, a merge 3D, a camera 3D and a render 3D node. Connect everything like this and change the render type to hardware renderer. Then in the camera transform, increase the Z value so it fits the screen. Between the camera 3D and the merge 3D, we will do all the camera movement. So make sure you leave space there. I will show you two ways, the regular keyframe way and my cheat code way. For the regular method, add two transform 3D nodes. The one closer to the camera will handle rotation and the other one will handle translation. First the translation. 
Decide at which frame you want the camera to be and keyframe it. You can use markers for timing. In the spline editor, select everything with Ctrl plus space and press F to get smooth S curves. If you want, for example, more ease out at the beginning, adjust the first keyframe. The more vertical the line, the faster the movement. The more horizontal, the slower it is. The biggest problem, especially when you are new, is that the timing is hard. The playback won't be smooth, so you usually only see the real result after rendering. When you then change one keyframe, everything gets messed up and complex curves like elastic motion are almost impossible. So honestly, I'm not a big fan of keyframing. That's why I created another method and this is actually how I built the whole intro edit. For this, you will need my Hopes Motion 3D preset. It creates motion based on mathematical functions, so it's always smooth. After installing it, search for Hopes Motion 3D with Ctrl plus space. The newest version combines every curve into one node. In the Animation Style section, choose which dimension you want to animate, for example Y, and then choose your animation curve. Ease in curves usually only make sense at the end of the composition, so when you choose Ease in, the control changes from Animation Start to Animation End, where you can type in the last frame of your comp. Right now, nothing happens, because the start and end values are zero. If you change the end value, you will see it swipe out at the end. The animation duration controls how fast it moves. Smaller numbers equals faster animation. On 60 FPS, a duration of 60 is roughly one second, which I recommend for most animations. And in general, I also recommend working in a 60 FPS timeline, because everything just looks smoother. The cool thing is, these motion 3D nodes are stackable. You can add another one and the values will add up. So if I also want an ease out animation at the start, I choose Y ease out and change the start value. If you want to animate rotation, make sure all rotation nodes come before the translation nodes. So if I want an X rotation that starts slow and also ends slow, I will set the duration to 299, the start value to 20 and the end value to minus 20. Then you can stack as many animations as you want. Just remember, rotation first, translation after. And here is the final result. This animation uses 9 nodes, 3 rotation nodes and 6 translation nodes. Now the only thing missing is a background. Add a merge and a background after the render 3D. I like to have a not pure black color, so I just increase the luminance a bit. For a clean transition, to the next scene, make sure the very last frame is just the empty background and start your next scene with an empty background as well. If you want a color change, simply keyframe the color around 30 frames before the end and fade it to white for example. To give everything that final polished look, I like to add the tilt shift blur node, set the angle to 90 for a depth blur effect and then also add my light shadow preset to make it feel like sunlight is hitting the screen. And that's pretty much it. I hope you learn something new and try out this UI edit style. It's definitely not the easiest, so it takes some practice. But I'm sure especially with Hope's Motion Pro and Hope's Motion 3D, you can absolutely do it. Like the video, subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.